Yeah, again, uh, the, the entire team is based out of Spain, but I think it's one o'clock central right now, about eight o'clock uh, in Spain. So my colleagues are probably drinking and, and out and about at this point. So uh, for any support that you all need, you have my email uh, in the chat. Um, so today, uh, what I want to do is introduce you all to, to Genially, which is a, a really easy to use educational content creation tool. Um, just a show of hands uh, or in the chat, I don't know if you all can react, but how many of you all have uh, used Genially before? Familiar with it? I see Samantha, raise your hands. Carrie, cool. Cool. Well, we will spend some time just going over the, the basics of what is Genially and what you can use it for. But uh, especially in the classroom, what I wanted to spend some time talking about was how to gamify, um, you know, the content that you already have and, and how to implement some some small, uh, you know, features within Genially to, to bring your content. What are the benefits of gamifying? What is, I mean, that's, that's, you know, fairly uh, intuitive, and, and I'm sure most of you all are already gamifying in some capacity uh, within your classroom. And then I'll walk through what are, what does that mean in Genially, right? Because we, we have many ways of gamifying uh, within within the tool. So for those of you all that don't know what Genially is, um, I'll give you a, a, a short and sweet explanation. Um, the content here that you see on the left is content that you all have probably been used to seeing for years and years. Very static, one directional. Um, it might be very text heavy, as you can see here. It might have a link that takes you outside of the content itself, right? But the content on the right is, is the same content you see, but made with Genially. So it's meant to be much more exploratory, participatory. As you can see here, by clicking on an element, I can explore um, content at my own pace, maybe hover over an element, bring up a tooltip, uh, what we call, um, click around, right? And be, you know, what we want is for users to be the protagonist of, of, the, uh, of, of a creation rather than just um, a viewer and a consumer, right? And as for those, the, the content that used to live outside of your creation, um, because we're a fully web-based tool, um, we can embed, say, videos, Google Forms, 3D images, uh, scientific calculators, right, as an example, directly within um, a Genially. So we do what we want to do at Genially is consolidate the information so it all lives in one place when, when you present and it, it flows and is, is a living creation rather than in multiple tabs as I have open on my other screen, right? So as you can see on, on one end, what we used to do is, is bore uh, in our content, but with Genial and especially in education, we see that this content um, starts to motivate and inspire our students um, because they can explore it uh, more so. So we will be talking about uh, how we can use Genially to gamify and, and how we can create quizzes and escape games um, but just to give you a, a, a more holistic idea of what you can do with Genially, um, you can create presentations. And, and of course, you can create presentations from scratch, um, like the one that I'm presenting. But we have hundreds, thousands, I believe, of, of templates um, that you can easily, uh, with one click, uh, like I'm showing here, jump into and, and edit everything about. Right. So here we have a, a, an idea of, of a simple presentation. Right. Um, to make your the content that you might have in, in PowerPoints already uh, more interactive. Uh, here's a template for a full didactic unit, right? If you want to, you know, um, create kind of a full lesson plan of objectives, um, we have uh, multiple templates already created for teachers um, within Genially, right? So here you'll see kind of our units exploring our objectives. We can place our, our games, quizzes, infographics within this didactic unit. Uh, we'll dive into some gamification, quizzes, board games, right? So how do we use draggable elements to um, have students participate um, with each other uh, in a board game, right? So you'll see some of these draggable elements. You'll see the ability to click in and discover more information um, within each, uh, each space on this board game. And if, Again, these are templates that you can can start building within. 
you'll see a die that you can roll. So another idea of, of uh, an integration within Genially, maybe housing our, our instructions within, within a window here. This is what we'll cover mostly today, but gamification, so escape rooms, right? Here's a template where we can access multiple lessons. And the logic is already created for you, right? To where if we answer incorrectly, um, we're incentivized to try again. And if we answer correctly, we can move on and, and um, continue on in, in the lesson. But aside from gamification, we can also take simple interactive images and just layer content on over, right? Like this interactive image of the man on the moon. And some other examples uh, that I'll provide and, and skim over. For example, this is one that our teachers love is the choice board. And again, everything here is fully customizable. And then lastly, we see, you know, students creating resources. So instead of, you know, turning in maybe a PDF for a, a Word document, they can create, you know, a more interactive and dynamic, say, biography or, or book report, right? And then again, because this is all web-based, I can simply take this link and um, share it with you all in the chat if you ever want to refer back um, to this. And this goes for, for any presentation that you create with, with Genial. So I'll go ahead and um, put this in the chat for you all to, to view at a later point. But up to this point, any questions on what you can do with Genially? Anyone here that has used Genially that wants to provide maybe some other examples to, to how they've used the tool? And this is like, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I was a little late. I took a wrong turn. Um, and this is available to us in our school district. So Genially, Genially is a, a, a freemium tool. So there's quite a bit that you can do with um, the free version of it. Um, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and provide a link at the end of the session on, on how to register for free. So a lot of these templates that I'm showing you are available and um, accessible. Um, but in terms of the, the premium uh, version that we currently don't have a partnership with, with the district, but definitely something that, that we'd be willing to explore. Uh, just let me... Um let the, anyone know that SISD, it is an approved app by the district. Uh, we just don't pay for the paid version. So you are able to sign in uh, with the free version and use it in your classroom uh, because it is approved by the district. And I do see some comments. Carrie, you've used it uh, for creating infographics. Infographics, that's, that's great. Um, if there's any inspirations that, that you'd like to share in the chat, um, uh, just to show the ease of use for sharing the, the content, um, that'd be great. Um, I see here it's a great alternative to slides or, or PowerPoint, um, creating flyers for events, right? So design and, and social media is, is also a, a great use case um, for Genially. But again, everything that I'll be showing today um, uh, is available for um, those free users. So again, very easy to get started. Maybe takes, you know, 10 seconds to, to register and, and start creating. Cool. Um, so now specifically with, uh, in regards to, to gamification, I just want to, you know, take a moment to, to ask you all, um, what are the benefits, um, you know, for gamifying your classroom? So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, take five minutes, post a link in the chat, uh, and we'll, we'll build a quick word wall, maybe in, in a word or two, why is gamification beneficial to your classroom? Can everyone access that link? Yes, I was able to. Thanks, Nancy. And I see in the chat too, we could use that. Engage students, definitely. So we have 12 answers. Let's see why it's not showing up. Oh, so here's our word wall. I'll type in my own. Cool, so yeah, fun learning, personalization, students enjoy it. Motivate, engaging, it's visual. That's a great one and, and something that, um, uh, you know, resonates with, with Genially uh, as well. And you'll see, I'll, I'll provide a case study later of, of a gamification of an escape game that was created uh, one, with one of our districts in, uh, in Texas that was very visually engaging, very interactive, 
Um, I'll also mention that it can be hybrid too, right? Um, you know, we, we think a lot about our, our return to the classroom, but still being able to utilize a lot of these products and, and, and tools that we use digitally. Um, of course, I'm presenting something over, you know, the, over the screen and, and virtually, but there's a lot of ways that we can create this hybrid experience with, uh, with Genially. Limit textbook fatigue, that's a, that's a great one, right? Um, so yeah, this, this is just something to, uh, to get everyone's uh, uh, juices flowing and, and to really uh, spark inspiration as, as you start to see some of these examples of what can be created um, with Genially, but I think we all understand why, uh, why, gen or why gamification is important and, and necessary. So without further ado, I'd, I'd rather just jump into the editor and show you all how you can start creating with, with Genially. Um, so let's, let's dive right into the, the editor, right? So I mentioned uh, first and foremost that you, with Genially, you don't have to create anything from scratch if you don't want to. Something that we pride ourselves in is, is a, a large uh, design team that is constantly um, releasing templates that you all can use, right? To eliminate the need to spend hours and hours on design or, or the logic of some uh, of a complex escape game or, or even a quiz, right? These are already created for you, right? And there's three types of gamification in Genially, and I'll show you the categories in a few moments, but one is a quiz. So, you know, how do we create just easy multiple choice um, scenarios where, where a student can test their knowledge? Um, the second is games. So something more interactive like that board game that I showed you all uh, a few moments back. Um, we also have, and you'll see, you know, you can play chess within Genially or, or Jeopardy, right? And then the third is escape games. So a full immersive experience that allows students to, to go through the journey of, of learning about a situation, right? Doing their research, potentially you can pair them up in groups together and have them work through this escape game and solve problems together. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the Genially dashboard. Um, so once you register on our website, this is the, the user interface that you'll be presented with. Um, this is this is your personal Genially dashboard. Um, if you have the premium version and, and have access to, to folders, hopefully you all are a little more organized than, than I am. Um, but uh, jumping into creating, how do we create a Genially and create uh, a beautiful gamification. I could either go to create a genial here, and my creations are here on the very left of, of my panel. And we'll see a whole category dedicated to gamification, right? And here, either just by scrolling through, you'll see so many templates that are already available for you all to start creating. Um, so, uh, you know, the, I, the main point of the session is to to highlight that these templates are all already available for you. But of course, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stop there. I'll, I'll actually show you how to how to create using some of these features. But to save you all the time, if you wanted to go ahead and start, say, with a quiz, for example, or a game, all you'd have to do is click on one of our templates, test the logic, test the the design, see if it's something that works for you, right? You'll see some of these windows and the interactivity is, is already set and you can very easily in a few seconds start creating and editing everything about that that game uh i do see a, a question in the chat can student activity be tracked at the moment no um we do have the ability to download scorm files uh with the master version of genially and import progress in that way um, into your LMS, but the current version of that uh, only tracks progress through a Genially. So the, the amount you could indicate if someone gets through 60 or 70% of a Genially, that is considered success, but you are not currently able to track, uh, say, correct or incorrect answers um, on a quiz. Hope that answers your, your question. Um, but again, as you'll see, I selected this template and very easily, I can edit everything about it from the animation, from the text to where that text takes me. You'll see the ability to modify interactivity, 
um, with with a, a group plan. If if you all uh, end up using paid version of Genially, we do offer um, trainings, uh, a few trainings throughout the year, um, so you all can uh, you know fully understand the capabilities um, of the tool, right? But again, um, here are some types of interactivity that you can add very easily um, within Genially. It's a very easy user interface, um, and, and that's what our teachers uh, love most. Um, so I do want to go back to the, to the panel and maybe show you all some other examples of some uh, more elaborate escape games that are available uh, for you all, or some other examples of, of um, gamification, right? So I showed you all an example of a quiz. Um, here, if I go down to games, you'll see a variety of, of templates um, in, our, in our games category that are available to you. So here, for example, a mathematical operations quiz, and you'll see the ability to drag elements directly within uh, a Genially, right? So test your knowledge uh, in that capacity and then check your answers, maybe down the road, right? So if, if you're just getting started with Genially, the first thing that I'd encourage you to do is, is just this, right? Explore the templates that are already available for you. Because if there's any time that you all can save um, when creating content, presentations, infographics, there's probably um, a, a presentation or, or template that's already being created. So you can save yourself that time, right? Um, further down the road, you'll see an escape, you know, our escape games. Um, I'll go ahead and, and click on one, say this chaotic kitchen escape game, where we have some sound in our Genially. If you can hear that, right? And in an escape game, right, we present um, some background to, to the challenge at hand, right? Um, and we're encouraged to explore. Uh, a little more than than a quiz, for example. So here we're told, look at the note in the fridge. And this note can be whatever you all want it to be, right? Again, everything here is customizable. And then we're told to move forward. And at the end, there might be, or, or throughout, there might be some clues to input um, a password at the end of, of the activity, right? So that is an escape game. And again, today's session is how to gamify um, your, your classroom using Genially. And, and the first answer is just use a template. Um, there, there, there are all these great templates already created for you um, to where you don't have to worry about actually gamifying, but more so just inputting your content, right? And, and telling the story in a different narrative to where your students are, as we mentioned in the word wall, more engaged and, and motivated um, and potentially working together um in the classroom but i will go over um some more features um if you've started creating with genially that you could implement to gamify your classroom uh in in a few clicks so uh a lot of what you saw in these templates uh these games were created using these three features right so go to page draggable elements and password protecting pages. So uh, I'm going to go into the editor and quickly create um, a, a game uh, within Genially that showcases these three features. Um, but before I do that, I see a question in the chat. If I have a membership and create something, can anyone access it, other students and teachers? So yeah, um, once you publish something, it's all link-based. So you can just take this link, and I'll put it again in the chat. And anyone can access this. Anyone would have access to their own version of, uh, of the creation. Is it able to work with uh, Lumia? Um, I would have to uh, understand how the integration would work. Um, but uh, Genially embeds very well with many other platforms and LMSs. Um, this embeds, um, I can easily take a Genially uh, here in the bottom right corner, for example, uh, and embed the iframe, say, into your LMS or another website, and it would be fully interactive uh, within that other platform. Similarly, you can embed 
you know, a lot of things within Genially. So as you saw with that word wall, I can embed, um, I embedded Slido within Genially. I love taking Google Forms and embedding them into Genially if I want to collect data whenever I'm, or, you know, whenever I'm presenting um, content. Uh, I mentioned the scientific calculator, for example, that's one that I didn't think of, but someone at a, a, a TCA in, in Dallas um, showed me one of their creations and, and they had embedded a, a scientific calculator. Um, 3D images are also um, uh, great within Genially. You can also embed Genialies within other Genialies if you'd like to layer your content uh, in that way. Before we move on to the editor, any any other questions from the group, uh, either in the chat or feel free to, to speak up? Cool, so I will go ahead and uh, continue. So again, what I wanted to show you um, within the editor are, are, are those three functionalities of go to page, interactivity, um, implementing draggable elements and password protecting protecting specific pages to maybe, um, uh, you know, add codes or, or, or clues within, within your, your game. So I'm going to go back into the editor and I'm going to pull up a template. And of course you can use keywords to search up templates. Um, and I have this timeline template that I really like using. And here is this genially, genial timeline template. Again, this isn't a gamification timeline, but I like the design. Um, I like the layout. So I'm gonna use this as a framework for uh, my creation moving forward. Um, here right away, you'll see the ability to select the palette. So you don't necessarily have to go with the colors that, that you're provided with, but I do like this blue and uh, yellow template. So I'll go ahead and use that. And so we mentioned three different um, tools that could be used to, to gamify the, the classroom, okay? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just very easily select um, this here and delete it. Select um, what I have here on the timeline, center it. And I'll edit the, the title to Genially Quiz. And add a subtitle, today's date. Uh, what I'm also going to do, just for design purposes, is delete these little icons that we have and title our boxes to each take us to a different question in the quiz. All right, so question one. Question two. And question three. All right, so again, this isn't a gamification template, but because I like the design, I'm gonna go ahead and use this and, and repurpose it um, for this session. So the first question is regarding um, go to page. So how do we use go to page functionality to create, say, uh, a multiple choice question and uh, some of those effects that you all have seen in, in other templates? So very easily, I'm going to go ahead and create um, my first question. Um, so here on the left uh, side of my Genially editor, I'll go ahead and add a page. And you'll see that I can add a page from my existing template. Or I could go into another Genially template uh, and add a page from, from one of those. Or if there was something that I worked on uh, before, you'll see I was practicing uh, this, this creation uh, earlier yesterday, I can go ahead and pull uh, from one of those creations that's not, you know, uh, duplicate my work. But I'll go ahead and create it from scratch. I'll just use this um, page that we had here. And I'll delete content and type in the, the first question. So where was Genially founded, right? So what we're going to do is just create that um, multiple choice 
the options. And because I don't wanna create anything from scratch, I'm just gonna take these boxes that I had here on my first page, copy them. And paste them. I paste it three. Oops. And my third, my third response. And move that over here. Okay. Uh, Miss Lee, I see you posted a template in the chat that was sent directly to me. Um, was that? meant to go out to everyone. Maybe not. Got it. So I'm gonna go ahead and implement uh, my responses. So um, we'll give we'll give the audience, you know, three three responses, right? Um, where was genially founded? Was it founded in France. Um, let me move this out of the way, clean this up. You'll see just in a few clicks, I can add and delete my content. Was it founded in Spain? Or was it founded in Mexico? So obviously there's, there's, um, you know, one correct answer and, and uh, two incorrect answers. So what I also wanna do is create um, a page that I would go to if I answered incorrectly or correctly. So what I'll do is just use this page right here. Um, you'll see in options, you have the ability to make a page visible or, invis uh, or invisible uh, upon publication. So I'm gonna go ahead and make these both visible. And I'll make my incorrect slide. And I also want to add a GIF, right? We, we genuinely love GIFs. And just so you can see how easy it is to add a GIF, I can search through my GIFs and one click add it to my creation. So, Incorrect. And I want to give um, the user the ability to go back um, to that question to try again, right? So here on the very left, you can go to resources, or sorry, interactive elements, and search through our buttons, right? Let's get a button that enables us to try again. And I like this pink button, right? Cool. So how do we connect? Um, the uh, the two pages that I just created, right? We have a multiple choice um, page and, and we have a page that tells us that we've answered incorrect, right? So very simple. And, and this is just to give you an idea of the framework of those templates that you've been seeing. But if you wanted to create one from scratch, this is how you do it, right? So the correct answer is Spain. Uh, for those of you all that showed up late, um, uh, Genially was founded in, in Cordoba, Spain, right? So uh, France is uh, an incorrect uh, option. So what I'll do is actually group um, the contents of this box. So it is uh, held together since I no longer have to edit a, an individual element of it. And here, uh, this upward pointing finger is where we add our interactivity. Uh, so I'll add go to page. And so clicking on France will take us to incorrect, right? We wanna specify the page that this, this button is taking us to, okay? Could you add a question to your, to your question? It's bugging me. Yes, absolutely, I can add a question mark, right? So at any point we can preview our creation just to test the, the very simple logic that we've created uh, by clicking this I. And you'll see that whenever I click France, it takes us to our incorrect page, right? Now, I also wanted to add uh, interactivity to this try again button to enable users to, to try again, All right? So how do I do that? Again, 
same process. Click on the uh, on the pink uh, button that we added. Add interactivity. Click on go to page, and then have that return us to the initial gene where it was genially found the page. Right. So again, we'll do that for this new button, the, the other button that we created. Group those together and add interactivity. And that will also send us to the same incorrect page. Right? Uh, next, we want to create a page for our correct answer. Right? Um, so Spain is the correct answer for when it was genially founded. So very easily, I'll just duplicate this incorrect page and change our text and change our GIF. So I'll go ahead and get another GIF. Go to Giphy and add our GIF. And instead of returning to the question, Right, I'll change that interactivity to move back home so I can access the second question in the quiz. Right. So now, now you'll see whenever I preview, if I go back to that first page, the first question, you'll see that if I click on the incorrect answer, I'm taking the incorrect, I can try again. Ooh, and I didn't add the interactivity to our correct answer. No problem, I can do it quickly. Add the go to page. So it takes us to correct. Right? So when I answer correctly, I can move on to my next question. Any questions about the go to page functionality? Um, the 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 very standard use um, again with go to page is just identifying which page that um, the action of clicking will will take you to right. If you're moving forward in, in a presentation in a slideshow, you can move forward or and backwards as you please. But when creating a game of gamification or a quiz, you can create um, a, a more dynamic uh, journey as as I did here. Could you create a multiple answer. Um, could you elaborate on, on that question? Okay, so for this particular question, it was just Spain, but like what if it was a question where the students could have more, it's more than one right answer, like maybe, um, and like if it's a multiple, like it's a question with the multiple definition, and uh, I don't know, I'm just making it up, but it, there's more sure. than one answer. Yeah, so I mean, I'm I could easily just take this correct answer, copy and paste, and now we have two correct answers, right? Um, all I'm doing is, is dictating where this interactivity takes me to. Does that make sense? So would they be able to choose, they wouldn't be able to choose both at the same time? They would not be able to choose both at the same time. That's correct. Okay. Um, would you show again how to add the button interactivity? Yeah, so adding interactivity to a button, very simple. Um, I'll go ahead and use this one as an example. Um, you could add interactivity to any object, whether it be a button, uh, an image, or text. You'll see that upon clicking them, I have these four options, right? We have animation, uh, which I won't dive too deep into today, but we do have this option to add interactivity. This is our, our finger. Uh, looking button, right? All I do is click on it, and we have all these kinds of uh, interactivity. I showed you all to go to page, but we can also add a window, which allows us to house, um, you know, information within a, a clickable window, or a tooltip, which houses information in a in a window that can be accessible by hovering your mouse over the object. Um, what does that look like? Um, I'll just show you with, with this image, for example, I can add interactivity and say, I'll add a tooltip and say, congratulations. 
right? So when I save that and preview it, I'll see that the interactivity housed within this window is this congratulations that shows up whenever I have a house over. So that is our interactivity, something else that I encourage you all to explore if you're just getting started with, with Genially. Again, any object, whether it be an image, text, or, or button, we can add interactivity. Great. So the second, um, the second feature that I wanted to talk about was draggable elements. Right. So similar to interactivity with with any object within um, Genial, you can make any object draggable. Um, now it sounds very simple, but I just want to give you all an idea of what that use case um, could mean. Right. So I'll go ahead and duplicate this page. And I'm going to look for a resource. And here with our resources, I'm going to look for a flashlight. Grab this flashlight here. Click. I'll go back. And I want to find shape that looks like um, looks like light is coming out of, of the flashlight, right? So I'm going to highlight both of these, change the color of the flashlight to be yellow, OK? Um, and we'll use draggle elements to look for a clue. Now, something else that I'm going to do is I'm going to make the background of this page a little darker. So I'll go here to background and make this a dark blue. Um, our text seems to have disappeared, but no worries. We'll just change the, the color of it. Highlight that, change it to white. And I'm going to add some text. Right, and this text will be, say, a simple, simple math formula, say 2000 plus 15. And I'll let you all know why this is relevant in a few moments. But this clue, I want to hide it within my genealogy. So I'll highlight it and make it the same color of my background, right? So that dark blue. So now the text is hidden, right? So what I'm gonna do with my flashlight and the light is I'll go ahead and group them so that I can move them together. And similar to adding interactivity, on the left, you'll see um, the open hand button where we can turn on dragging mode for any object. So I'll rotate this a little bit and turn on dragging mode in, in view mode. So what does this mean for our, uh, our Genially and, and our gamification is that we've now uh, created an exploratory uh, aspect to our, to our creation, right? So we encourage the student um, to look around and, and, and look for clues, right? So now as they're viewing the Genially, they can drag this flashlight. And because there's a contrast in color, oh, we won't be able to see it. There's one thing that I that I didn't do. If I go on this text, we'll have to work with the layers and move the, the text a layer above the flashlight. So here I can put objects in order and move it to the top. So that whenever I move my flashlight, I can discover a clue, right? So our, you know, within a few clicks, um, again, I mentioned protagonists at the beginning of the of this creation, we can easily look for clues that we can use further on in, in our quiz, escape game, or, or gamification, right? 
So those are some things that you'll notice in the templates. But if you wanted to create uh, an element like this within your, your Genially, um, the, the dragging mode uh, can be used in this case. Uh, we also see the, the dragging mode used for word matching, maybe when, when teaching you know, English or vocabulary, right? Um, or within the, the mathematics template that you saw, we can drag uh, the, the symbols to, to complete equations. Um, so just in, some inspiration for that, that um, dragging mode, right? So we found our clue. Now, the last thing uh, that I wanted to mention within gamification of Genially is how to, how to password protect pages, right? I say this and it might come across as we want to, um, uh, you know, implement some more privacy with our content, but password protect, protecting our pages can also be largely beneficial to creating escape games and, and games within Genially. So um, this time I'm not going to create a slide, but I'm going to direct, I'm going to create a new um, correct page, right? So I'll go ahead and duplicate this, add this to the end of our creation, and I'll change the GIF just to differentiate it. So delete that image. And we'll find a congratulations uh, GIF. Right, and this could be the last question of our escape room. Right, so instead of uh, implementing the, the, um, the question within a slide, what I'll do is I'll password protect this page. So how do I do that? Um, in the options for that correct page, I can go to options and add a password for the page. Now, the question that uh, I'll, I'll give here is what year was Genially founded in, right? And the answer, which now aligns with our clue, is 2015, right? Genially was founded in, in 2015, right? So, the title for this page is what year was genially founded in? And we could give an example text or, or clue. Uh, we could also modify the, the background or, or the interface of that, of, that, um, of that page. But now this element has a password. So how do we connect it? We'll go back to our page. Question three is password protecting. And we'll add interactivity here and change it to go to page. That takes us to that last page. All right. So if I save that preview, you know, we can access each, each question by clicking on the button, but to access our third question and to get to that congrats page, you'll see the ability to import uh, or, or answer the, the question in, in text form, right? So instead of answering multiple choice like we did before, what year was genially founded in? We could type in 2015 and we're taken to um the the correct sequence any questions on how i did that um uh, potential use cases again the the three features that i mentioned um are is a lot of what you'll find when uh looking through those templates that we already have uh available um i see we are out of time but uh, I did want to provide, and here you'll see a Genially embedded within a Genially, but we have this great case study uh, from one of our partners, uh, James Flaskam is actually a, a, one of our ambassadors and is a learning coach at Frisco ISD. But he created this amazing uh, case study that, that um, covered the, um, uh, the Lindbergh baby kidnapping case uh, and provided some examples of how uh, there was, uh, how they used a hybrid, hybrid approach to group students um 
together, walk through, and, and you'll see the, the genially that we have here, and I'll, I'll quickly go into it, um, and identified uh, how students were, were responding to it, and, and the, the results are, are actually fascinating. But um, if I go in very quickly, and I'll go ahead and post this in the chat uh, as well, you'll see how we built this breakout room, uh, escape game, divided his students into, uh, into groups, and created this exploratory uh, journey, right? Where, you know, kids are incentivized to look around the room, find clues, right? Find something on the windowsill, go back and, and maneuver around this case. So I'll go ahead and, and place this uh, in the chat for you all to explore. I had a great time exploring this on my own. I was actually stumped on a couple of these questions, uh, but just so you all could see a real world scenario of how some of these features were used, how we can hide elements, find them, uh, and uh, perhaps have a code at the end that, that students use to, to escape the room. So uh, here's the link in the chat. Uh, Jeff, I know we're a, a little over time, but um, I know this was somewhat fast paced for, uh, for uh, uh, you know, a, a more so complex version of, of Genially. But I think if you're just getting started um, with the tool, I would definitely recommend just getting started with with templates. Uh, again, if you go into the panel, Genially is a free tool to use, um, and there's quite a bit that you can do with the free version. So, writing right when you get into the the dashboard, see the templates that are available for you, search through them, play around with them, uh, and again, if you if you want to present to your class, it's all web based, link based, no need to to download anything. But um, you know, lastly, appreciate your time. Again, you have access to this to this creation. Uh, you also have my email if you ever want to run anything by me. Um, ever want um, you know any advice? Again, I'm I'm the I'm your North American uh, rep. I'm I'm based in Austin, Texas, so uh, happy to be of, of support as you start uh, utilizing the the tool more. Uh, I do see a question: Is password protecting slides part of the free version? Yes, it is. Um, once you get into the paid version, and I didn't explain this too much, um, this is more so controlling privacy of your creations, um, importing audio uh, directly from your computer. There are a lot of premium templates that you uh, might not have access to, um, but I would say at least 40% of them are, are accessible with, with the free version, and, and they're, they're really beautiful and, uh, and interactive. So I'm happy to stay. I know there's another session afterwards, but Jeff, you, you let me know. Uh, okay, thank you, sir. I do appreciate it. It was great uh, learning more about generally. Uh, for the participants, if you could please uh, go to the chat and make sure that you uh, sign in to the uh, sign in so you can get your credit for today's uh, session. And if there's, does anybody have any questions before we head out? No, just a compliment. This was really nice. I like the I like it, especially that things are already there and I just have to open up and, uh, you know, adjust it to whatever lesson. I'll yeah, thanks, Nancy. Yeah, if, if there's anything that I'll, I'll leave you with is just how easy it is to, to use. Um, uh, if, if you want to, if you start using it uh, more and more over the course of um, the next few weeks, let me go back to um, uh, the panel. Um, this is available to the free uh, accounts as well. But if you go here in the top right, we do have a Genially Academy where we have hundreds of you know crash courses on how to add animation, how to um, uh, how to add interactivity, interactivity, how to integrate um, uh, other tools that you might already be using within Genially. Again, we want to consolidate um, the the amount of content uh, into into one creation rather than having many, many places where, where we're presenting. So Academy is a great resource. Um, if you don't want to reach out to me, but please feel free to, to reach out with, uh, with any questions or, or comments. I did have one question. Um, yeah. So I've used Genially in the past and I've had my students use Genially. The one problem that um, I've kind of faced that I wish 
hopefully y'all are maybe working on um, is the collaboration aspect because you can't work on the genially at the same time. So in the future, is that something that, or is that like a pipe dream yes. that will ever come? No, that that's that's probably the number one piece of feedback that we have and something that we've already um, built out uh, in, in one form. So it's specifically currently for our master accounts. Um, so we have a couple plans. We, our teachers are usually using the EDU Pro, but then we have the, the master accounts, which give you the ability to remove the Genially watermark and also work collaboratively um, in, in a workspace. So that's what you see here on the very left of my screen. Um, I won't dive into it um, too much because it's not available for our, our EDU accounts. Um, but here we do have the ability to work simultaneously on, on projects. So not a, yeah, not a feature for the, for the premium. Any other questions? All right, we're gonna uh, go ahead and uh, stop the session so we can get started on our next one, but we do appreciate you, uh, Christian, coming and sharing this information with us. Yeah, thank you all for, for joining.